This is City Hall, and I spoke to the mayor, Diane Feinstein, about the varied communities in San Francisco. Well, I think, first of all, you've got to understand the city. The city uh, came from nowhere with the uh, fat finding of gold, and it grew in 10 years from a small Pueblo under Mexican rule of about 400 people to the 10th largest city in the United States 10 years later. And that was because gold was found here, and people came from all over the world to search for their fortune. So we have always been a city of entrepreneurs. We have always been looked at as uh, a tolerant city, an open city. Um, some people say eclectic, others say eccentric, some say crazy. I, I spend a lot of my time uh, convincing, cajoling, uh, uh, reconciling different groups. But, it, but then the byproduct is understanding, it's tolerance, and I think it's enormous artistic stimulation. Meanwhile, outside on the steps of City Hall, I spoke to another San Franciscan politician. Hello, Sister Boom Boom. Well, hello, darling. How are you today? I'm fabulous. Who is Sister Boom Boom and what does she stand for? Well, Sister Boom Boom is really Sister Rose of the Bloody Stains of the Sacred Robes of Jesus. But that's OK. You can call me Boom Boom. I'm one of an order of gay male nuns dedicated to the expiation of stigmatic guilt and the perpetration of universal joy. We're called the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, and we believe that God created a beautiful paradise for us to live in, and if we would all just enjoy the fruits of that garden, there'd be plenty for everybody to enjoy, and everyone could be happy. Well, it's always nice to know, and you recently stood in an election and got an enormous amount of votes. That's right. I ran for the City and County Board of Supervisors, came in eighth with 23,124 votes, and it was a wonderful opportunity to bring some of my ideas to the public forum. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, oh, well. See one thing anyway, right Anyway, you know, we... A lot of people were upset thinking that we should separate church and politics, but church and politics have never been separated. It would be naive to believe that they ever were. So I ran in habit, and I stood as none of the above. And that's how I was listed on the ballot. I wanted to bring some imagination and humor to the election. So many people are alienated from politics because it's so dreary and people take themselves so seriously. You know the politicians take themselves dreadfully seriously while everybody's laughing at them behind their backs. Well, nobody laughs at me behind my back. They do it right to my face. <laughs> so I thought I'd be the most honest politician in the race and people could identify with that. And 23,000 people did identify with you. Do you think it was mainly a protest vote or do you think they actually voted positively for you? Well, you know, there's, that's a pretty two-sided kind of thing. People voted for me and against business as usual. Business against usual has been disastrous. And I wanted to show that we need something different. If not my way, then somebody's individual creativity. Bring people in more humorously, more creatively, more joyously to make a healthier, happier body politic. How many sisters of perpetual indulgence are there apart from yourself? Are you the mother superior? Oh, no, we don't have a mother superior. We elect officers in compliance with uh, the corporate laws of the state. We are a tax-exempt corporation. But, oh, excuse me, where are those cigarettes? Uh, I think you but, tucked them into your... Uh, oh, thank you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but we function basically as an anarcho-syndicalist convent. A what? An anarcho-syndicalist convent. Could you describe what that means, please? Well, we elect officers, but basically whoever has the power is the person who takes the responsibility and does the work. And how many of you are there? Right now there are about 14, including Sister Missionary Position, Sister uh, Cardiopulmonary Resuscitation, Sister Hysterectoria, Sister Mary Media, and in our daughter house in Australia we have Sister Mary Medusa and Sister Joy of Man's Desiring. Sister Boom Boom is not in the November election, so I don't see that that's relevant. I really look at uh, some of these, quote, characters. Uh, they wouldn't exist if the media didn't make a phenomenon out of them. But your sisters and brothers in the media seem to gravitate to these kinds of um, excesses, if you will, and play them as, this, as if they were part of the general life of San Francisco. They are not. So do you, do you basically rather disapprove of them and feel they should stay away from it all? It's not a question of whether I approve or disapprove. It's a question that they really are not part of the mainstream of the city. They're really not part of the decision-making process. Mm. Uh, I think they're part of 
what some of you people, and I hope the BBC isn't one of them, does to, um, uh, I think, assassinate the character of our city. A lot of rumours around that you might be a strong vice presidential candidate. Well, there are a lot of rumours, but rumours are, are not fact, and um, I, I would find that possibility remote. Remote or not, she's still tipped very strongly as Walter Mondale's political running mate if he gets the Democratic nomination for president next year.